Hello friends, we are going to discuss our next topic related to the subject high voltage engineering. That is nothing but the applications of the solid dielectric insulating materials. The majority of insulating systems used in practice are solid. This is majorly used in practice. They can be broadly classified into three groups. First, organic. Second, inorganic. And third, synthetic polymers. There are different materials for this. For organic, inorganic, and synthetic polymers like cotton, paper, press boards, rubber, wax, wood. These are the examples of organic materials. Then asbestos, ceramics, glass, mica are nothing but the inorganic materials. Synthetic polymers are further classified as thermoplastic and thermosetting. Like polyethylene. is under the category of thermoplastic, then perpex, polypropylene, polystyrene, polyvinylic chloride, that is PVC, polycarbonate are thermoplastic, bakelite, apex resins, cross link, polyethylene, Phenolics, elastomers, melamine are thermosetting. Now, what is organic materials? Basically, organic materials are those which are produced from vegetables. So, here the definition related to organic, which are produced from vegetable. or animal matter. They are good insulators and can be easily adopted for practical applications. However, their mechanical and electrical properties always deteriorate rapidly as the temperature increases 100 degree Celsius. Therefore, they are generally used after treating with varnish or impregnation with an oil. For an example, paper and press board used in cables, capacitors and transformers where the oil is also used. Then inorganic materials. In organic materials, the definition, unlike organic materials, do not show any appreciable reduction in their electrical and mechanical properties. And that is almost up to 250 degrees Celsius temperature. So rising temperature will not affect much on this inorganic materials. There, both the properties are same. Importantly, in organic materials used for electrical appliances like glass, ceramics, they are widely used for the manufacture of insulators, bushings, etc. So like we have bushings of ceramics, we have the glass insulators, etc. 
So because of their resistance to atmospheric pollutants and their excellent performance under varying conditions of temperature and pressure. So variation of this temperature and pressure with, will not affect much on this inorganic materials. Then we have third, that is synthetic polymers. Synthetic polymers. They are polymeric materials which possesses excellent insulating properties and that can be easily fabricated and applied to the apparatus. They are, as I said, generally divided into two groups of thermoplastic and thermosetting. They have low melting temperatures. They have low melting temperatures of the range 100 to 120 degree Celsius. They are very flexible. They are very flexible and that can be molded and extruded at temperatures below their melting points. They are widely used in bushings like the bushings or in organic materials, which is of glass and ceramics. So bushings, insulators, etc. Bushings, insulators, etc. Their electrical use depends on their ability to prevent the absorption of moisture. So this electrical property completely depends on this absorption of moisture. There are certain important dielectric properties of some of the materials are discussed on next slide. We have first material paper and bones. The kind of paper normally employed for insulation purpose is special variety known as tissue paper or craft paper. Paper and paper boards used for dielectric purposes are produced from cotton. Organic fibers or organic fibers, mica, glass, and ceramics. Generally, if the thickness of paper, let us say it is T, is 0.8 mm or higher, called as paper board. Paper board. Boards of higher thickness are made by laminating many layers of paper with an adhesive to get the desired thickness. So this thickness basically decides the kind or quality that is called paper board. These are called the press boards and are used in transformers. Even in the bushings. The thickness and density of paper vary depend on the application. The low density paper is preferred in high frequency capacitors and cables, while medium density papers used in power capacitors. High density papers are preferred in DC and energy storage capacitors and for the insulation of DC machines. Paper is hygroscopic, therefore it has to be dried and impregnated with impregnants such as mineral oil, chlorinated, diphenyl and vegetable oils. The relative dielectric constant of impregnated paper depends upon the permittivity of the 
cellulose. Then next material is fiber. Fibers when used for electrical purposes will have the ability to combine the strength and durability. So it has a strength and it is durable. The fiber used are both natural and man-made. Both natural and man-made. They include cotton, jute, flax, wool, silk, rayon, nylon, terylene, teflon, and fiberglass. The property or the properties completely depends on the temperature, humidity, etc. It can be observed from the different values of permittivity, which decreases with the temperature, while tan delta is higher at lower frequencies. Next material is mica. Mica is the name of our class of crystalline mineral silicates of alumina and potash. It is again subdivided into different materials. It is again subdivided into different materials. And it has a hard and brittle, but, or we can say, hence are unsuitable for electrical insulation purposes. Mica can be split into very thin, flat laminae. So it has got a unique combination of electrical properties such as high dielectric strength, low dielectric losses, resistance to high temperatures, and good mechanical strength. They have made it possible for it to be used in many electrical appliances or apparatus. Very pure mica used for high frequency applications. So this is all about the mica. Then we have a glass as next material, which is used for different applications. It is a thermoplastic inorganic material and comprising complex systems of oxides. The dielectric constant of glass that varies from 3.7 to 10. And the density varies from 2.2 to 6. At room temperatures, the volume resistivity of glass varies from 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 20 ohm centimeter. The dielectric loss of glass varies from 0.004 to 0 0.020 depending on the frequency. Then we have ceramics. Ceramics is another kind of application of the insulating medium that is ceramics is another another insulating medium that is again inorganic materials which is produced by consolidating minerals into monolithic bodies by high temperature heat treatment ceramics again can be divided into different groups which has low permittivity ceramics which has used as insulators High permittivity ceramics, which are used as in capacitors and transducers. Porcelain and steatite are dense and chemically insert in all alkalis and most of the acids. Then we have rubber. Rubber is a natural or synthetic vulcanizable high polymer having high elastic property. So therefore, it is more preferable. Electrical properties of rubber 
depend on the degree of compounding and vulcanizing general impurities chemical changes due to aging moisture content and variations in temperature and frequency have substantial effects on the electrical properties of rubber some important electrical properties and applications of different types of rubbers can be mentioned there are polymeric materials which exhibit elastic properties similar to this rubber now next we have the plastic plastic that is polymeric materials used for electrical insulation purpose that is used for electrical insulation purpose that consists of long chain macro molecules with repeating monomer units a polymer is named by putting the prefix poly in front of the monomer therefore called as polymer for example propylene monomer becomes polypropylene some of the polymers used in current insulation practice are polyethylene ptfe pvc polypropylene polystyrene polysorbutene uh, that is butyl rubber rubber polyester polybutanedine polymethylene metacrylate etc this is commonly found polyethylene then we have polyethylene fluorocarbonate plastics nylon polyvinyl pvc that is polyvinyl chloride polyesters polyesterenes etc then we have epox epoxy resin resins this are thermosetting types of insulating materials they possess excellent dielectric and mechanical properties they can be easily cast into desired shapes even at room temperature they are very versatile and their basic properties can be modified either by selection of a curing agent or by the use of modifiers or filters they are highly elastic samples tested under very high pressure up to about 18 four times 0 psi or 1200 atmosphere return to their original shape so these all are the different insulating solid materials which can be used for the purpose of insulation so thank you so much guys take care